Well, hello there, Space Cats. It's me, Jules, bringing you more drawing, planning, and publishing. And today, we are concentrating on drawing. I will give you a clue what. If you're someone that's interested in illustrating a children's book, I'll leave the link to my course in the description box below. And I'll be talking a little bit more about this later in the video. But yes, you guessed it. I'm going to show you how to draw hands today. It's one of those things that's notoriously difficult to get right, but if you stick to a few simple ideas and rules, then it certainly is a bit easier. Before we start, I would like you to use your hands, or more specifically, your thumb. Give me a thumbs up and poke that subscribe button, ding the bell, with as much gusto as you can possibly muster. Done it? Fab. Let's get on with some drawing. Here is a hand, and this one happens to be my hand. The things that I wanted to point out to you are that, first of all, you've got a big fleshy bit here that we need to take into account. So we can draw this sort of like a triangular shape. And then this main section, you can draw almost as a, um, a sort of rectangle with a, a curved top because your knuckles, although you might assume that they are straight, they're actually not. They actually, if you had a straight line, so these two are almost in line. Those two there are almost in line. This one's a bit higher, this one's a bit lower. So let's get drawing a sort of hand shape. So what I meant when I said it has a curved top. So let's imagine that this is our rectangle. It's got slightly, uh, um, the sides are slightly going, curving outwards. Give it a curved top and then I'm also going to draw it in that triangle. So this is a bit like having a sort of cup of coffee and that's your the handle of the mug. Um, here are your knuckles, one, two, three, four, and this is where your thumb would end over here somewhere, and your fingers are going to be like this. And again your fingers are, this one is the tallest one, these two are almost in line and this one's quite a bit shorter. And your your hand, your fingers actually do not have any muscles in at all. So from your knuckle to the end of your finger, there are no muscles. They're all pulled using ligaments, a bit like a puppet. But the thing that pulls them are these ligaments that go through the back of your hand and they meet around about here. Uh, and you have lots of little bones in this part of your hand here. So your ligaments, if we draw, let's draw some fingers in. Like this. Uh, and your ligaments are going to all meet around about here. So let's imagine that those, that pulley system comes to about here. But this part, you have a sort of more fleshy part here. So that part needs a slightly more rounded bit and this is where your wrist is and then here is where your thumb is and of course your uh, fingers and thumbs all have joints in as well so there's one joint here which is this one and there's another joint here which is about here and if you have a look at my thumb how it sits it kind of curves away up here uh, so let's draw that in like this and then you've got this little bone here which is this one for a wrist now this is if you want to draw your hand quite realistically I'm just going to start going over this and there's the nails here but if you've seen any of my other drawings, you'll know that I don't draw very realistically. I much more have more of a sort of cartoony um, style. So I will show you how to draw that as well. And then here's your thumbnail. You don't see whole of that because half of it is hidden around the other side. So that's the sort of mechanics of the hand, if you like. And then your bones. This this is your larger bone here and then you've got a smaller bone here 
and then all your little hand bones in this area here. So let's just have a look at perhaps drawing um, a hand that's sideways on like this. So this, you need to think about this fleshy part again of your thumb. If I, if I sort of look at what my hand looks like, this is how I, I quite often if I'm drawing something and I think I can't, I can't quite picture it in my head, then I do it with my own hand or my own face if it's an expression and um, that helps. So you've got some here and then that fleshy part again and then this part it's kind of side on but if you have a look that that knuckle is in line with my thumbnail so I'm going to draw that in there's my knuckle and then this second knuckle and that's the back part of my hand and then this finger the second knuckle is there and the third knuckle is up here somewhere so let's draw that in sun keeps going in and out today so the lighting's looking a bit weird then I blame the sun okay so my finger I can just about see that knuckle on the second finger and then as where your where the creases are you can make it go in a bit like this so it shows that that's folding the skin is folding at that point and then I'm just going to sort of tuck these other fingers around the back like this and then that's my little finger that I can barely see it's a bit tricky because I'm actually trying to look up there's my wedding ring I'm trying to look up and see what you're seeing as well as trying to look down and I'm not quite looking at the same place so it's not quite so easy. Okay I'm going to draw, um, I'm going to show you actually, move that up a little bit, I'm going to show you when you're drawing this part, um, there's the thumb and then this sort of fleshy part is the wrist. Uh, that needs to, you need to sort of show that almost like a, it's like a sideways seagull taking off. And then there's the other fleshy other part of your hand. This, these are your fingers. So your fingers, one, two, three, four, and then the fleshy part. So this is all your palm and that's almost as if somebody's doing that because you're not seeing the whole of the palm there but you're seeing quite a bit of the fleshy bit and then that's where the the creases would be but what about if you were holding on to something like say an umbrella so let's draw in the umbrella shape That's the, the handle of the umbrella. Um, the fingers, so you would be grasping something. I'm going to use my ruler. Um, grasping it from behind like this. So you're going to see the fingers, so that it's going to take up this sort of area here. You're going to see the fist and not very much of um, the actual fingers themselves. So one, two, three, four knuckles. 
and then you know when you're looking at knuckles like that you see it's quite knobbly isn't it they've got quite knobbly hands so let's draw in some knobbly fingers but then where's the thumb going to go so the thumb is going to come around the other side of the umbrella and you're just going to see a little bit of outline there and that shows us that this person is gripping the umbrella. Let's imagine that you want to draw somebody whose hand is just hanging down the side sort of fairly naturally. Start with the thumb. Sort of shape. And then because that's sort of going up the wrist, so the wrist is going to be Right. It's going to be sort of like this. And that's where inside here is where all your wrist bones are. So there's that slight bend like this. And that's the other side of the hand. It's funny, I, I practiced all this yesterday and sometimes there are some days where things just come really easily and other days where it's a right pain. Don't know why, why that would be. Okay, I think we're getting there. So again, so the, 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 pad, the, the little paddy bits of your fingers like this. And then we can just see the outside of the little finger there. And then you can show the nail. You don't have to show the whole nail if you don't want to. You can just do a little crescent moon shape to show that that's where that nail is. And I don't think you'd actually get to see any of these other nails here. So that, that part there is really important because that shows that fleshy outer part of your hand. And then the wrist, this sort of angle, is quite important. And this one's got a really pudgy finger for some reason. Oh well. Perhaps it's somebody with pudgy hands. This finger needs to be a bit longer. wider here. So that can be, perhaps you've got a sleeve here, you might have a sleeve just there, so that's perhaps just hanging down as they're walking along. And then another thing I wanted to show you was if you've got somebody who is sitting with their face in their hands, like they're really glum, this is a really easy way of showing, it's easy to draw and quite effective. So there's our face, let's draw some eyes, nose, mouth. So hands, they just follow the shape of the face like this, but they come across the face a little bit. And then the elbows are going to be going outwards. So that's the, the sort of rough and then you've got the little finger is nearest the mouth and just make the fingers a bit bigger a bit bigger and then the last one is a bit smaller and then you can either draw sleeves like this person and then their shoulder comes around like this or if you want to you can draw the whole arm so let's draw little finger slightly bigger uh, third finger, second finger, and then the arm, remember that sharp bend there, and then this is what your elbow is going to look like, this sort of shape, like a soft V, and perhaps they've got a t-shirt on, and there you go, let's give this person some hair. 
So the way I draw hands usually is quite cartoony. If I was drawing somebody who was walking along the street, I might just draw something like that. It's not realistic, but it does the job. It does what I'm trying to explain. If I was trying to draw this person, I might actually not bother doing fingers completely. I might just do this, but it's all a question of getting a bit of practice and then getting used to drawing in your sort of style. And it makes it so much easier. Just draw, You can just draw them quickly if you, if you want to. Um, let's imagine you're drawing somebody who's holding hands. So I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to draw two circles together to show that. And then I would, I would look at my own hands and think, well, how, how does that look when you are holding hands with somebody? So you might have this person's walking this side and this person's on this side, and they might have, you might just see their knuckles like this, and then this person, you might see their fingers just poke, poking out the side there, like that, and you might see their thumb there. You won't see this person's thumb because it'd be around the other side. I promised you some cheats, so I'm gonna show you a couple of ways here to hide your hands. So here we have, uh, let's call her a mum. She's quite a groovy mum because she's got leggings and big boots on and she's got a dress on. And this little kid down here, I think maybe it's her son has done something a bit naughty, perhaps he's spilt some paint or something like that on the floor. So she's looking down at him and she's got her hands on her hips like this. And then all you need to do for the hands is just draw that sort of shape and that, that's as if the fingers are, that's her little finger and her hands are on her hips. And then on the other side, like that, just show a little bit up the top and then down the bottom, it's just that kind of like a wedge shape over there. Now dad has got his hands in his pockets so let's draw some pockets, let's draw his fly and then you, all you literally got to do is draw the bottom of his sleeves and then join his hands to his pockets like that and that looks like you can even kind of do like a little line to show that his pockets are bulging a bit with their hands inside. And the little boy I've just um, hidden his hands by drawing them around the front of his body like that so you can always hide the hands either behind somebody in the pockets or hands on hips like this and that's a really good way of dealing with hands if you're not quite sure what to do with them or how to draw them. I used to hate drawing hands but once I got used to just practicing drawing in my own style a bit then I got confidence and I really think that is the key but if you're trying and you're trying and you just can't get it then use one of my cheats to hide your hands better that than completely giving up on the picture entirely now to my course step by step illustrating a children's picture book it's a comprehensive look at how to get your story from words in front of you on a piece of paper to actually published book in your hands. There are nine modules lasting around about four hours in total tuition and you can replay any of these lessons as often as you want. And I've just updated it to include some other information that is really vital for getting your book out there. It covers subjects such as making those first key decisions about how you are going to publish this. It works through all the layout stage, through your dummy book making, through to some illustration tuition sessions, and also getting to grips with the dratted tech. Ugh. I'm really happy to answer any questions that you have as you go through this course and there's also a Facebook group to help support you too. And finally, if you feel that it hasn't done what it says on the tin, then I am happy to refund you your money. Check out all the info in the description box below. Next week, 
we will be looking at how to use mixed media. I will be using watercolour paint and chalk pastel. I know it's a bit maverick, but I love it. Until then, I will be practising my sheep shearing on the dogs, and I'll see you next week. Nano, nano!